So let's go. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Breaking Point Podcast UK. Today we are here with we are here with Ben. Got some surname that I'm not really sure how to pronounce, so I'm, I'm not going to do it. It's just, we're just going to call him Ben. Uh, nice and simple. And Ben, Ben, are you? What are you? You're a fitness. Well, you you tell people what you are instead of yes, being a half-hired version. Yeah, so um, I just do uh, fitness motivation. I kind of just in- inspire people. Um, you know, we all have problems. We're all going through, you know, certain things where it's breakup or we have mental issues. So what I do is I just help uh, relate to people. And then I just kind of follow them into saying, okay, you know, you have this problem. Now let's let's deal with them and let's create uh, healthy habits for them instead of just, you know, sticking in the, the mud of life and just being... Like, this is my fate. I'm just going to accept it. Like, no, you got to, you got to, you know, create healthy habits. You got to go for goals. You got to start, you know, there's more to life than just uh, what we see. You got to venture out, you know, you got to take risks. And that's kind of just what I um, help people do. And um, it seems to be working. So, so yeah, absolutely. Definitely does. And fitness is at the fitness and like health is at the root of that. Would you say that's like. Yeah. So, uh, pr- yeah, pretty much just like fitness mindset. Um, I, I, you know, I'm a, I, I, I compete in bodybuilding. So I, that's just kind of like my, wow. um, forte. Um, so that's, it's just a lot easier for me to, um, you know, t- tell people to help people, you know, get into the gym and then just to help out with like the mindset, uh, too. Cause you know, I've gone through, uh, some, you know, mental problems as well. Um, and you know, I just tell them just how I was able to get out of, you know, the horrible mindset that I used to have. And now it's a lot better. Oh no, you're frozen. Sorry. You froze there. That's all right. As long as the recording would be fine. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, no, I think I, I, I got the, I got the gist in the end. Okay. So how long have you been doing this? Not bodybuilding. We'll get into this, but they'll get into that. But how long have you been doing? Yeah, the so social media? Yeah, yeah. So competing, uh, I've been doing it for six years. And then, uh, as far as the uh, motivational stuff, I just I actually started two months ago, um, and I that's when I opened out that page. I think it was like the beginning of June, um, and it just caught fire. Uh, really, just two um, months. I think you know, multiple times a day. Yeah, two months. Yeah. Um, and it was something that uh really was like on my heart for a long time but i never went out and um wanted to put the commitment in wanted to put like you know all the hard work in but it was just such a a weight on me that i had to do it and um i made sure that you know i took whatever risk i had to take in order to do it and now i see that it's paying off a lot and now there's a lot of uh, doors that have been open for me, a lot of opportunities that have come my way, which I would have never thought to happen so fastly. Um, I thought it would have taken like, you know, probably a, a year or two or a little bit more to get where I am now. Um, and I still got a ways to go, but still, it's a crazy amount of progress, crazy amount of stuff uh, that's happened uh, recently. And it's just been an absolute blessing. Um, uh, but yeah, it was just like every single day, and uh, I had, you know, I, I still work a nine to five, uh, but I've been working a nine to five really my since I got out of high school. Um, and I was just in the thought process of, you know, just keep your head down, keep a low profile, you know, just work the nine to five, um, you know, save up, get a house and then retire. But um, I don't know, just there were, I knew there was something more that I could do. And it kind of like burdened me every single day. Um and it really made me sick. Like it, it really made me sick just thinking of it, and uh, you know, never putting that foot forward. But I just got to a point where it was push came came to shove, and um, I was willing to do whatever it take took to um, you know inspire and motivate people. That's what I always that's a, that's what I was always a goal of mine. Yeah, no, that I love that. I I don't think I've spoken to someone who said. There was something in me that knew I had to do this and I mm. did it. It is fate, life and fate has a funny way of manifesting scenarios that highlight your weaknesses yeah. and, and highlight your um your sort of 
efficiencies or in i suppose in your case it's slightly different it's it shows to you brings about like scenarios that point out the things that you need to do but aren't aren't doing and your you your con so the right. conscience is is really closely associated with that there's a great story yeah. in yeah there's a there's a there's a great story in the bible i can't remember who it is i don't know if you're religious i think you might be actually i think you are yeah i am a yeah yeah yeah, I was, yeah. I've seen your stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. think it's Job, or maybe, I don't know who it is. It's someone, God comes to him and says, you need to go and speak to these people because they're doing all sorts of things that they shouldn't be doing and they're going to they're gonna go end up in hot water. And he goes, nah, I'm not doing that because they. I'm from such and such place and those lot hate people from this place. So I'm not only would they not like yeah. me, they definitely not like me telling them that God is saying stop doing that, otherwise you're screwed. So he flees, gets on a ship, and apparently, you know, God creates like a, a whirlwind or a, a storm, and the the crew are all like, "Well, what's going on? Or this is ridiculous." And and he puts his head up and goes, "I think this might be because I've disobeyed God's um, yeah order." So he volunteers himself to jump off. And the reason I bring that story up is because when you said you said something along the lines of everything, it either it was weighing you down or it was it was making you sick. You said it was making you sick, yeah. and what that's kind of yeah. like the waves in that story, the storm that is yeah. being created, and obviously I assume you felt better once you started doing what it, what it was that you knew you had to do. So. Does that sort of relate that sort of story to to how how you how it felt? Oh yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Um, it, it definitely felt like that. And then, and like you said, you know, once I started to do it, um, yeah, I felt way better. I felt alive. Um, mm. you know, I wasn't, I, yeah. you know, before I felt like uh, I was just being, I was just doing everything for myself, um, and just being like selfish. Um, so now, like, I always wanted to, uh venture out and reach the the masses but um and now that we have like we live in a day and age where social media everybody can be reached right so you know if i didn't use that to my advantage it's like you know how could i face god and say well i gave you all these tools and you didn't use them and then i and then i just use the excuse of well i i didn't know what i was doing or um i don't you know i i didn't want to put the work in like that's that's not a good excuse. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so um, it, it was just one of those things. And, like, it, it's not necessarily the amount of followers that I get that brings me joy. It's because I, I get a lot of DMs. Um, I bet you do, yeah. From people who are, you know, they're going through something that's really um, a struggle cool. and more of a struggle than I've gone through um but it's the messages that i get after that even just taking that time to let the person talk and just um just have someone there for them i mean that means the world to them and you wouldn't even think that you would think oh well you know just talking to someone who what significance is that but literally just taking the time to you know care about somebody it goes a long way it goes a long way absolutely the, the sorry about that the amount of people that just don't have someone to talk to and just receive such little attention because um mm -hmm. apparently maybe apparently not isn't the right word but we process love and attention the same so or at least i've heard someone say that before so one of the reasons which makes sense actually because when children act out in a naughty way they receive attention and if their mind mm -hmm. processes attention and love in the same way if they feel as if they're lacking the love that they're they're not receiving enough love from whoever's taking care of right. them and they go off the other end they are in their mind going to bring about a scenario and then garner attention and therefore love and when i first heard that i thought that's a weird thing to say and then i thought well Maybe that makes sense. Maybe there's so many people nowadays who are attention seeking 
because so many people feel void yeah. of love and i think that that is a, a yeah I, I can imagine some of the dms you get must be ridiculous some of the these things that yeah. people go yeah. through yeah absolutely sort of really horrid to say the least so uh-huh. what have so what was your childhood like let's let's go a little bit back to the yeah so um i i grew up um i had very loving parents like i have i have great parents um really grew up with a very family oriented household um you know i grew up in the same house that i was born in um and just like in a small country town and um i don't know where i got exactly where i got uh some of the mental struggles that i had um i think it was just, i don't think it was necessarily one specific scenario i think it was just a buildup of just um things that people said you know whether it was in school or you know just over the years and then you just identify yourself with that and then it just keeps building up building up and it just manifests it because you give it that um that growth and it just you know grows into something that uh takes over your life really and it becomes a bigger problem than it would have at the beginning um had you dealt with it and now it's it becomes a stronghold yeah and um it took a lot of um work and it took a lot of time to get out of it however the start of where i started to um you know change over that thought process actually i'll i'll back up i'll back up before that um I, I played baseball and I took baseball very seriously at the time. You know, that was my dream become a baseball player. Um, and like before every game, um, I was like very afraid to make any type of failure, make any type of mistake. And even coming up to a play, I was like, uh, <laughs> just, I just wanted to make contact with the ball. And if someone had asked me, you know, what I had, thought they they would have never thought like I I I thought that way uh going into the field and you know when I did really badly um I let it just beat me like tear me apart um a lot and then but it wasn't like you know it just stayed in baseball it leaked into other areas of my life where it leaked into like my social life um you know and that's really where um a lot of the problems you know came from that and um it wasn't until I had graduated high school. I was still still dealing with the same type of problems. Um, and once I did my first bodybuilding show, which was like in 2019, um, I was like at my really, really lowest point probably possible. Um, I had a job like I, it was the only, it was the only job I absolutely hated at the time. Uh, <laughs> all the only jobs I ever had. I, <laughs> yeah. Um, it was at a grocery store. I'm not going to say the, the store, but it was at a grocery store and uh, I, I absolutely despised it. But every single day I went in, I wanted, I literally wanted to hand in my uniform and quit. Um, but I, for whatever reason, I didn't. I think it was just because my dad was always instilled in me, like never to quit anything I ever did. Um, so I just, I just stuck with it. And <laughs> dude, I, <laughs> it's funny because I'm like, I'm going back at it and it, it's funny to me now, but at the time it wasn't, but, um, I was, I had, I was going through a really tough time in my mind and I had, uh, called up my dad like a bunch of times where I was like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to do any of this. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to do the show. I don't want to do the job. I just want to quit. I just want to quit everything. And my dad was really there just to, you know, have my back and just, you know, talk me out of it and, uh, give me a lot of encouragement and, um, I owe a lot of that to my dad. He's he's really uh, helped me out. Me and him have a great relationship. I understand a lot of people, they have horrible relationships with their parents. They probably never even met their dad um, or their dad was just abusive to them. But I was fortunate enough to have a, a really good um, foundation in that. And, um, but, uh, but yeah, there was, there came a point in time where um, I had gotten out of work early and this never happened because I always they always made me stay late and I was always working like crazy hours. So um, I had gone out of work early for whatever reason. And I was just waiting for my dad to come to the gym. 
and I had parked my car and I was like, I had some spare time. So I was like, you know what? I'm freaking done thinking this way, man. Like I'm, I'm, I'm done, uh, you know, being this, having this loser mindset. And I just want this like to go away from me. Um, so I got, I stayed in my car and um, I think it was like for maybe like 15 minutes. Uh, I was just praying to God. And I was just telling him like, just take this away from me. Like, I don't want it anymore. Like, this is just, it's killing me. Um, and I want to be, I want to be, uh, I want to be better and I, I don't want to think this way anymore. And then uh, as the 15 minutes like came to close, I wasn't timing this, but as the 15 minutes was coming to a close, I felt like a weight had come off me and it was like, I felt like a new person again. I was on like this high and, um, and it, it was amazing. It was an amazing feeling. Um, and, you know, since then, I'm not saying that I've been perfect. I, I've, I've, you know, kind of reverted back to my old ways at times, but it wasn't to the point where it had been. And it was, it wasn't like I had, um, I would think that way for weeks upon weeks, it would be like maybe a day or two. And then I would, you know, go back to, um, you know, thinking positively again, thinking, um, um, you know, really good again. And, uh, it's something I have to maintain. And I think that's like that for anybody. It's something you have to maintain if you're not naturally uh, a positive thinker or you're not naturally um, someone who has a very good mindset. You have to constantly uh, meditate, um, journal, um, and just be accountable for your thoughts. Make sure you're thinking on uh, positive, uplifting um, thoughts, and you have to become disciplined in that. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a um, everyday thing, and I always tell everybody, um, the same advice because this is how I always start everything is I start slow and I start um, in very small manageable uh, ways so it's instead of uh, meditating on like 15 minutes I'll med- I'll read scripture and I'll, I'll meditate on on it for five minutes I try to master that and once I get good at that I up it to 10 minutes and then 15 minutes you know so I that's how I I, I, I do it and I tell everybody even with weight loss I tell everybody like hey if you want to lose weight, like just start by replacing one meal in your day with something that's uh, low in calorie, high in protein. And because anybody can do that. I mean, come on. If you can't do that, <laughs> there's no excuse. There's no excuse. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, try right? an art. So, yeah, right, right. Literally. So if you if you can't do that, it's like, um, you know, and you, and you just build upon that. You you build upon it. And I'm, I'm huge on that because I think I'm a really big believer on creating habits rather than like, getting all hyped up and motivated and then you know two weeks later you're right back to where you were i don't i don't think that helps anybody no no it doesn't you 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 said a lot there you said i just want to go back to the bit where you were in your car and you sort of were were praying there's so we don't know what god is if god or maybe i don't know maybe maybe someone does but we we use the term god but the term God could have multiple different meanings. So one meaning could be a possible figure in the sky or some sort of consciousness or collective like spirit that combines us all. Another possible is that God is something that exists within all of us. And because earlier I was speaking about the, the, the story with Job, or I think, I think it's Job with mm-hmm. the ship and the, and the conscience and one possible theory as to what God is could be that voice of conscience, or at least because you've got, I mean, my um, religious knowledge won't be anywhere near as much as yours, but you've got the the, tr- the Holy Trinity, don't you? So maybe the, the Father's yeah. the Holy Spirit. So 